Sarajevo is a gateway to the east. Islam was introduced here with the arrival of the Turks over 500 years ago, and now 50% of its inhabitants are Muslim. Sarajevo's Islam is a moderate European version, not the Islamic fundamentalism of further east. Businessman Asim Hadziomerovic is a typical exponent of Islam Bosnia style. He runs a wholesale beverage business. He assures us that he goes to the mosque for prayers and observes Ramadan. Bosnian Muslims are quite happy to drink beer as well as stronger alcoholic beverages. It's a good business. Nobody here around working and was brandy, was whiskey, was beers and this is something different which one we are believe. But better is something work and our children, our wives and our family, whole family, uh, have a good life. Yeah. But Sarajevo has also a second, more radical side to it. Strict followers of the Quran do not approve of a faith which allows personal interpretation of Islam. They adhere to a literal interpretation of the Quran. We're at the house of Abu Hamza, a Syrian religious warrior who came to Bosnia in the early 90s to fight against the Serbs. At the time, Abu Hamza felt that it was its obligation to defend his brothers in faith. He brought with him his strict moral conventions and sacred practices. Islam has prescribed the jihad, a holy war. It is mandatory in order to defend ourselves. If someone should stand in your path when you are spreading Islam, then it is your duty to impose it and proceed by use of force. First, Islam is offered. If it is rejected and not accepted voluntarily, there is possibility of negotiation. Failing that, it is open war. A rare picture of a Mujahideen unit on parade during the Bosnian War. 1,600 fighters from several Arab states. The soldiers had their own unit which fought against the Serbs. They were under the direct command of Al-Qaeda, a group still unknown at the time. The Bosnian president allowed them to operate when there was turbulence and war in his country. After the war, the Dayton Peace Agreement decreed that Mujahideen should return home. But in reality, many remained. They married Bosnian women and settled down, many of them here around Zeneca. We have an appointment in Zeneca prison, where Ali Hamad is serving his 12-year sentence for terrorism offences. Hamad was a Mujahideen commander. He warns of a sleeper network all over the Balkans. He claims that many fighters from the Bosnian war are still in the country. Our interview was called off at short notice. Hamad is afraid. His family's lives have been threatened. His last public appearance was before a war crimes tribunal on the 8th of September. Hamad stated that he came under the direct command of Al-Qaeda whose goal is the establishment of an Islamic State in Bosnia. We did not come to Bosnia just to help the Bosnians, although we maintained that publicly. We had our own goals, which no one in Bosnia knew anything about, neither the Bosnians, nor the Bosnian army, nor the president. As far as we were concerned, we were exclusively responsible to Al-Qaeda. Today there are still a good 400 religious warriors in the country. A government commission is trying to identify them, but most have gone into hiding and cannot be traced. They have not helped us, only damaged us. They gradually infiltrated the country. It was public knowledge. Even neighboring countries knew about it. Otherwise, they could not have achieved it. I think they didn't come over here just to help us. There was something in it for them, too. They have power here. They have their own agenda. It's not only to help us. Just take a look around. Look at what people are wearing. Short skirts, bras, they're half naked. Take this one. 
Also Auch Muslim. Muslim. <lacht> also. While one Muslim sect in Sarajevo is moderate, the other promotes a more radical version of Islam. The largest mosque in the country, the King Al Fahd Mosque, was built with Saudi money. It cost 20 million euros. Some Bosnians have adopted the lifestyle of a Wahhabi Islam. They refuse to be filmed. They've been branded terrorists too often. Zevad Galiasevic feared that Bosnia could become the infiltration point for extremists in Europe. He fights and tries to resist the increasing influence of radicals. As mayor of a small locality, he sold vacant houses of inhabitants who had fled and which the Mujahideen wanted to take possession of. The social situation in Bosnia-Herzegovina is complicated. People are dissatisfied. Serbs still treat us arrogantly, especially in the Republic of Serbia. There are not many options on offer, and many feel that the only hope of change and rescue lies in Islamic fundamentalism. This is where terrorism comes into its own. People like Abu Hamza or Ayman Awad have strong links with radical Islam. They're leaders. For us, they're a threat and a danger. On the surface, Abu Hamza and his friend Ayman Awad are honest family men. However, the Bosnian government regards them as a national danger. It rejected the requests of both for nationality. The former holy warriors expect to be deported to Syria any day. Their children and wives would stay alone in Sarajevo. I feel so unhappy. I keep thinking I shall never see him again. My father is a very ordinary man. He's no criminal or thief or member of any mafia. Under the European Convention for Human Rights, Bosnia-Herzegovina is obliged to ensure that children live together with their father. My wife has the right to live with her husband. Bosnia is committed to respecting this convention. Should I be expelled, my family would be left alone here. The world-famous journalist Isad Hechimovic has been engaged in researching and writing on these religious warriors over the last 15 years. He finds it deplorable that all foreign Muslims are coming under general suspicion. Deportation purely on the grounds of a potential threat is not legally sound. We don't know reason still, and there is no any explanation in public about what is possible reason, but it is official declaration of our government and uh, such person cannot uh, leave, cannot uh, return to Bosnia. EU asked uh, our government to check list of citizenship as precondition to visa regime. <laughs> Do Hamza and Ewad have to be sacrificed in order to satisfy the Europeans? Are they just pawns in the international war on terror? The Americans are behaving like cowboys, and all who want to suck up to the Americans say that Abu Hamza is a liability. They have no proof. I have not done anything. That's the way it is. Religious warriors such as Abu Hamza or Ayman Awad have already made plans to fall back on should the need arise. If an attempt was made to deport them, foreign Islamic organizations would promptly claim that they had been appointed as their official representatives in Bosnia. Then they would probably be able to remain where they are. <laughs>